Hi, and welcome back to the How Low Can You Go radio series. And today we are playing a Joker. And the reason is, is that I've been able to include the Eaton Grundig M400. Now, ordinarily, this radio is priced well beyond the other cheap Chinese radios we have been looking at. But due to controversy surrounding this radio and some terrible reviews on the internet, you can find this radio heavily discounted and I've managed to get this radio in under £20. Now I have got the Eaton version here, the 400, which is an FM medium wave and short wave receiver. But it is also sold under the more prestigious Grundig title and actually comes in two different colours. And it is under the Grundig title that you find these quite damning reviews around the internet. Now some people out there are seriously not happy bunnies and a lot of people are quite badly hacked off with this radio. Now once you get past a few people that are disappointed with the overall quality, considering this is a Grundig, I think they were expecting a little bit more. But there's two issues that come back time and time again. The first complaint is the radio drifts when tuned into a station. And then the second one is the rather short battery life. In fact, people were saying that the radio dies within an hour with fresh batteries and some people were getting less than 20 minutes. So I will be testing this on my version later on. Now another reason which may cause some of the bad reviews is this radio is such a variation in price. Here in the UK I found this radio selling for up to £55 from some sellers on eBay but generally it was selling around the £30 to £35 mark. But when you move over to say Amazon there's even more controversy because the prices on Amazon are quite astronomical. I saw this radio here selling at over £100. And let's be honest, if you're spending that sort of money, you're going to want something quite special. But of course, there are people that do buy the first price they see. But with some careful sort of searching, you can see that the price does settle down to around about sort of 30 UK pounds. But I do think that this negative publicity has taken an effect, especially over in the States. On Amazon.com, the price has been heavily reduced all the way down to $18.49. So once you convert that back into UK pounds, that's just over £12, which is astonishing for a radio like this. So I went looking for a bargain myself, and eventually after some searching from a direct warehouse located in China, I found the Eaton version of this radio for just over £17 delivered to the UK. So I quickly ordered one. However, when I went back onto the site the day afterwards, they'd all gone. So it appears they're selling like hotcakes, so if you see one for the right price, then I'd say buy it. So, here it is, the Eaton M400. Comes in a uh, rather nice double lined box. So, once inside, you get the normally obligatory cheap pair of plastic headphones, which if you're like me, you just tend to uh, throw those away. The radio does come with a 14 page full English owner's manual, which is always something quite nice because the radio does have quite a few features. We, uh, we've got a clock on this and an alarm. Some things we're not really going to be testing, we're just going to be concerned with the radio itself. But it is nice to get some very good illustrated English instructions, especially after some of the Chinese instructions we've been looking at with the other radio. Also in the box you get a, a couple of warranty cards which is always nice to know that you've got a genuine radio and not a Chinese counterfeited copy. And then you've got the radio itself. Now it comes in this sort of like imitation suede leatherette sort of case which is quite nice really. I mean it uh, keeps it all nice and dust free and you've got a little belt clip there that you might want to use. Not the strongest case, I'd probably advise you maybe going on to eBay and getting something a little bit more substantial if you're going to take this radio to football matches or something. And then we get the radio itself. I have opened this previously and just put in some two batteries, two uh, treble A batteries. But it's actually, you know, it's quite nice. It has this sort of like rubberized sort of effect. You know, this was quite very popular sort of like 10 years ago and everything seemed to be covered in this. Yeah, it's okay. It does attract dust though and it can wear off on the corners on other actual devices that I've had but overall yeah it's a very nice quality feeling radio I mean certainly for this for the money we paid you know I've got no complaints for the actual overall presentation just looking at the specifications of the tuner itself 
FM 87 to 108 MHz, medium wave 520 to 1710 kHz. Short wave is split into seven bands and into two groups. The first group covers 5.8 MHz all the way up to 10 MHz, and then the second group covers 11.4 MHz all the way up to 18.15 MHz. So that covers pretty much all of the actual shortwave broadcasting bands. It's got quite a nice long sort of stainless steel telescopic whip, although it's not directional, it can't rotate uh, 360 like on the Texan. So let's jump straight in and let's have a look at the FM quality, a quick tune through the FM band. Cemetery supervisor. The weather will be cold but staying dry with sunshine this morning. Movement of Mendelssohn's Violin Concerto. He was joined there by Thomas Hengelbrock, the conductor, and the Chamber Orchestra of Europe. We've had Paul Wilkinson, who's East, enjoying the one. Well, breakfast and here's stations, and is therefore too short of the number required by FIFA rules. So I have to say that actually the FM band is very impressive. All the radio stations there coming in very loud, very, very clear. Um, certainly the best actual receiver on FM that I've seen in this series. And do you know what? That little speaker also deserves a mention. Very nice clear sound quality with actually a hint of bass. I think it was only that very large Dijon radio that could actually beat it. So on FM it's definitely a winner. So let's swap now to medium wave and see it gets on with that band. People of the county for over 300 years, they know what you're going through and can help you through. of underperforming schools could be forced to accept new leadership if the Conservatives win the next one. Clarence, Clarence Blue. Up student tuition fees in England have been criticised by some leading universities as implausible. Ed Miliband says he wants to reduce the maximum annual charge. So once again, I'd say, yeah, very impressive on medium wave. Some of those um, more powerful medium wave stations did slightly begin to overload the tuner. Um, just have to reduce the volume, really. I mean, you do get that here in the UK, unfortunately. We have got some very, very powerful medium wave broadcast stations. But it was no worse than you got on the Texan. So, yeah, overall, very, very impressed. Right, let's move on to the uh, much harder shortwave actual bands, and let's see if we're getting that medium wave bleed over.
Now we're starting on these uh, low frequencies. Now I'm not expecting to pick up any broadcast shortwave radio stations here. What we're just looking for is to make sure that the actual sort of band is clear, it's just static. We haven't got any of that awful medium wave bleed over which wiped out those cheaper Chinese radios. Yeah, and that seemed absolutely fine. Well now we go higher, now we'll look for some broadcast actual radio stations. Even picked up a small amount of CW there. I think this radio did rather well on shortwave actually. There was uh, no medium wave bleed over I could detect. Tuned into some of the more powerful transmitting stations rather well. So pretty impressed. The couple thought of buying a new home. They encountered problems when they applied for a loan. My work unit refused to act as a backer. For Now one thing I did find strange is on the side of the radio it actually has a lock button which I would have thought maybe would lock the volume and the frequency if you're actually going to use the radio in your pocket. But in actual fact all it does it just locks the power switch so you can't switch it off and that's pretty useless to be honest so I'm a little surprised at that. Okay so finally what we're going to do is address those criticisms which we found in the comments which was that the radio actually drifts when left on a station and that the batteries last a very short time. Now I fitted these generic branded cheap 1.2 volt rechargeable batteries. Now I haven't actually recharged these since I started testing these radios so they're probably about half discharged now. So what I'm going to do is start the radio off and I start the stopwatch on my phone and just see how long it'll actually last. Now in some of those poor reviews on Amazon people were using brand new alkaline batteries and some claiming to get an hour some even less. So I think with these partially discharged batteries I think if the radio say lasts over an hour to an hour and a half then I think it would be absolutely fine. So that's what we'll do. This is I think Radio 3. Um, just leave it and let it get some its thing. I think I'd better pull the aerial out just to be sort of fair to help its tuning because also one of the other criticisms was that the radio did drift. So we set that on 91.3 pull out the uh, aerial to so it gets a strong signal and then uh, I'll leave it and leave the stopwatch running and then come back a couple of times and see how it gets on. So here we are just over 40 minutes and there's uh, no sign of any drifting and yeah the radio is working great. Now we're at 1 hour and 40 minutes and uh, all systems are still go. And now finally, uh, 3 hours and 10 minutes, no drifting and those batteries are holding up really well. So I think that concludes that, I don't know, maybe these problems are actually 
you know, it's unique to the Grundig version of this radio, but this radio that I've bought and imported from China seems absolutely fine, doesn't seem to be suffering from any of these problems. So in conclusion, I feel this is a very nice little pocket radio. Yeah, it may be a little unfair to include it in the same batch as some of these Chinese radios because, let's be honest about it, the true price of this radio here in the UK is in excess of £30. But it does appear that a series of bad reviews have really hammered that price down. Now, if you're in the US and you can pick one of these radios up for $18, well, I think it's worth the risk. I'd say go for it. Obviously here in the UK, as per normal, well you're going to have to try a little bit harder and dig around the internet. Yeah, maybe on eBay or some of these actual Chinese warehouses that sell direct to the UK. And if like me, you can get the price below £20, I think it's worth the risk because this Eaton branded radio, I can find nothing wrong with it at all. So I think that's all I can really say about this radio. But anyway, as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.